So our tweets are a very basic database model, but we could add some functionality to this. Belongs to and Rails are gonna be required by default, so it's going to enforce that you have a user and a, a Twitter account out of the box just by having a belongs to. But we need to do a few other things, and we want to validate that the body validates that body has a length of one minimum and maximum of 280 characters. So it's going to uh, run that validation and actually enforce those values so that your body text cannot be more than 280. And it's gonna be at least one because you need to be able to tweet at least some character. It can't be an empty tweet. Now we can do validations for publish at as well. So we'll say we want to make sure you have a publish at uh, just in general. But we can also do a after initialize here and we can give it a block. So there's a bunch of callbacks that your, um, your models can have. So when you create a one in memory after it initializes, that's what that does, you can do some work and assign some default values, for example. So we can say self.publish at to assign a publish at timestamp. And we'll use the null equals operator to say, if this value already exists, just leave it. We don't need to change it. But if it's nil and it's empty, then we can set it to a default value. So we can say one dot hour from now, or we could say, um, 12 or 24 hours from now. So tweet it tomorrow at the same time. So this will change our form so that now the publish at date is defaulting to a day from now. So that will improve this quite a bit, but we have not implemented our create, so we can't test out those validation errors that we just defined. So we'll need to go add our create action here. We'll have at tweet equals this time current user dot tweets dot create and we'll have tweet params. And we can add our private def tweet params to grab those out of the params. So we'll require that you gave us a tweet and then inside of the tweet, we only permit the Twitter count ID and the body and the uh, publish at timestamp. And that is it. So here we'll say, actually let's do dot new. We'll say if at tweet dot save is successful, we'll redirect to the tweet and we'll say notice tweet was scheduled successfully. And otherwise we will render the new action and display the form errors. So let's try it now and we'll click this and we are taken right back to the same page, it seems, but that is because we don't have any errors being displayed. So let's go to our registrations new and grab this snippet of form errors again. And if you catch yourself doing this, you probably need to extract that to a partial so you can reuse that in multiple places. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to app views, shared folder, We'll create a form errors.html.erb and we will uh, make sure that that's prepended with a underscore because this is a partial. We'll paste that in and we'll tab it over. And now in our new, we can render shared form errors and we'll have our form variable passed over to that partial so it can reference the form inside of form errors.erb. So this variable is accessible only if we pass it in in our render call, which means we can go back to all of our other forms and replace that with a one-liner and all of our forms will look exactly the same and we can change them in one place. We don't have to copy this chunk of code all over. So if we run schedule now, body is too short, our errors are displayed, and if we go to the sign up and we have chris at gorails.com, which already exists, and we do some invalid passwords, we'll see the errors show up here as well. And it is using the same template for form errors in both of those forms. 
and it just works. So that is really, really handy. So now let's go through and handle uh, creating a tweet. So we have it successfully uh, creating. We'll redirect to the tweet, but we don't have a show action for an individual tweet yet. So we can change this however you would like. Um, we'll probably actually change this to go to tweets path. So we go to the index and we display the tweet after it is created. So now we'll come back to the index and we'll be able to see all of the tweets once we add them to the template. So we'll do that in the next video.